One of my favorite memories of Grandpa has to do with uh, an analogy that he would always use when talking to people. If he would get off topic, um, and he would always say, oh, that's spaghetti. I have to get back to the meatball. The funny thing is that he, he always blames me for telling him that he has a spaghetti brain and that he needed to get his act together. And, and so I was telling him like, oh yeah, Grandpa, I think your brain is a little bit more of a spaghetti brain. Um, and so anyway, but he, he remembered that. And then he um, came up with the, the meatball um, idea because he was always saying when he would get off on some spaghetti, then he was, he would reprimand himself, be like, oh, that's spaghetti, I need to, I need to get back to the meatball, so he took the critique of his, his grandchild very seriously. <laughs> Well, my favorite memory is hiking Mount Rainier because it was my first time and he was super excited. And he kept saying, oh, this is around this corner, this is around this corner. And he said he had something special for me to see. And I was walking a little bit ahead of him and then I was kind of coming up the hill and as I came around a corner, it's like all of a sudden the mountain's in front of me. And it was just, it was majestic and it was amazing. And it was like, wow. And I even remember getting a little teary-eyed because I just had never experienced that before. And he came up beside me and he, you know, looped his arm into my arm and he goes, daughter, daughter, this is what I've been wanting to show you. And then he started sharing about God's workmanship and his masterpiece and just how nature was so much a part of, part of God. And then as we continued to walk, we walked together and he was sharing other uh, memories of his times um, walking Mount Rainier. So that was pretty special. My favorite memories about Bernard was our last, his last climb up Silver Star. Well, about three years ago, we took him up there thinking that uh, he would just get out and, and we would set a, a chair for him up, you know, part way up so he could sit down and rest and look at the flowers. But no, he jumped out of the car and he was heading, he was going, he was going somewhere. <laughs> It took us a while to figure this out. Um, about halfway up, uh, we realized, uh, we checked in with him and he was going for it. And, and you know, his, his, his big concept was, his motto that day was, now or never. And so he went for it. And between Tiffany and Grant, uh, playing ukulele for him and, and uh, encouraging him along and he made it to the top and oh yes and <laughs> I decided because he was he knew he was going to be kind of slow uh, even though he was halfway up I ran all the way back down to the car to get the get a watermelon and carry it to the top and even though I beat him <laughs> it was still something well appreciated and it helped us make it to the, you know, he uh, made it to the top, refreshed, and just enough energy to make it to the down, to the bottom, right before uh, it got dark that day. It was such an amazing, beautiful experience. Now, the last time that he spent a few days at our house, I have a distinct memory, in fact, I can still hear him singing this song. It was one of his favorite songs to sing in the morning. All the darkness of the night has passed away. It is morning in my heart. I am living in the sunlight of the day. It is morning in my heart. It is morning, it is morning in my heart. Jesus made my the gloomy shadows all depart. Songs of gladness now I sing, for since Jesus is my King, it is morning, it is morning in my heart.
uh, I wanted to share with you dad's biggest passion was uh, that he was unapologetically loved Jesus and he wanted you to know that Jesus loved you too just as much. He prayed for opportunities and they came about to the point where he would talk to people and had prayer with people and they didn't forget him. I would have to say two things. One was mountains and views, but the most important thing he was passionate about was his love for people, all mankind. He had a deep love for and just to make sure that they felt seen and heard and that people around him knew that he cared for them. He loved to talk to people, he loved to minister to people, to share his experiences with people, and he always was talking about people. And so Grandpa uh, was most passionate about how he could bless other people in a tremendous way. The traditions or habits that he started in the family. Well, I gotta say, I think the number one thing that I've caught on to is the delicious green smoothie. And the other thing is that he started the Jolly Good Fellow song at birthdays and would hold the note at the end of the song, creating a competition where everybody would join in. Even for me as a child, and I always uh, yearn to be the one to, to be able to uh, hold that note the longest, and it was made birthday parties uh, so, so much fun. It's hard to really put the impact that Grandpa's life had on myself and other people around him. Uh, he was a man who really embodied the love of God in his life day by day. And this had such an uplifting impact. He always saw the best in everybody around him. And this made other people want to live up to those expectations that uh, he put on them in a way, like the expectations that they were good, they were loving, they were godly. And uh, that's what he saw in people. And that's what he brought out in people. Grandpa would ask me what he could pray for in my life on a regular basis. And I honestly and openly shared with him many of the struggles I faced throughout my life. And he prayed for me, and he prayed for my family my relationships with those I love, my hopes and my dreams, and so many prayers were answered. He believed in the power of prayer and the unconditional love of the Father, our God in heaven, and provided me and many others the tools to come to believe this higher power existed in our lives as well, that it was reliable when we would call upon him, and that when all else fails and we fall straight on our backs, that our Heavenly Father would be there to catch us and cradle us when we fell. And he just had such a deep meaning way that he would um, in, impact each person's life personally. He wanted to know about you on an intimate level so he could know how to pray for you, so he could know how to come alongside you. And he just had such a passion that came from a deep place in his heart. And that deep place from his heart that he shared with you went directly into your heart. And those are things that I'm hoping to learn and keep in my heart so that I can share with those with my family. It was an influence of people realizing that someone cared and someone was trying to be an encouragement and um, that's how we all felt that we knew he cared and showed it in many ways.
And what message or piece of advice um, do I think he would give us today? I think he would continue to emanate the attitude of gratitude and being grateful. And shortly after his passing, Tony found this rock at the riverbed. And it just reminded me and all of us that we should have gratitude in our lives and that he will continue to be in our lives with this ever grateful spirit. And as far as advice, if dad was here today to give me advice, he would tell me to keep moving. He'd say, every day, he'd say, get out and walk. Did you, did you take your walk today? And he would always encourage me to walk a little further today than I walked yesterday. And he would say, tell me that, you know, by moving and being outside walking, that was how he stayed close to Jesus. Uh, what did my daddy have for us? Well, he, he gave it to me directly when he was in the hospital, the very last night I spent with him at the hospital. He called me over to his bedside and he said he wanted me to write this down, which I did. He, he said he wanted his family to remember that if they make one small adjustment in their life, it could make a big difference in the long run. And he really wanted people to make, continue to make adjustments for a better life. Um, and he was always doing that himself too. He was always willing to look at himself and review his actions and his way of thinking in order to make better adjustments in his own life. What are some things I miss most about him? His voice, his cheerfulness, his presence, our talks, his inspiring text messages, Bible verses, and quotes. Grandpa knew us more than anybody. He knew our lives, he knew our hearts, he knew our hopes and our dreams. And the hardest thing about his passing is that we no longer have that presence on this earth of somebody who knows us so well and knows our hearts. That's what I love the most about Grandpa. And uh, that's one of the things I'll miss about him the most is that um, just talking to him every day and just sharing life. We did that for several years before he passed. Uh, the details of life, the ups and downs, and uh, even sometimes today, I just reach out automatically when I'm driving down the road to try to call him, and then I realize I miss that about him. For me, like his sweet memory lives on for us in our home, and you know, for me through um, our Heavenly Fathers, and through Bible reading, and also I think the biggest impact is you know when we see our precious precious children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and family their little faces you know dad is the center of all of us and each one of us has a sweet little nugget from him planted in our hearts that he gave us and you know each time we're together there's just a little piece of that that's shown Another thing I'll be missing most about him is just his kind heart and how much he is willing to listen and hear you. And no matter what he's going through, he was always there um, to help our family, to help with any other um, issues that we may be having, or even just if we were having a really good day, he wanted to hear about that. And I think that's one of the big, biggest things I'll miss about him. Heart. And that he wanted all, everyone around him, uh, especially his children and loved ones, to really feel God's love. I miss his singing a lot. He loved to sing hymns, and he loved to sing his German songs. And one song, like we used to sing this in the car when we were traveling around with our children, so, schläft ein Lied in allen Dingen, die da träumen fort und fort. Und die Welt hebt an zu singen, triffst du nur da 
Sauberwort. I will miss his daily text messages of encouragement and inspiration. I will miss his prayers. I will miss his laughter, his joy, his singing. But most of all, I will miss feeling, experiencing God's love through him. So I miss so much Grandpa's big smile, his enthusiasm, if it was about going for a hike in nature, seeing a mountain, flowers, the beauty outdoors and God's creation, or eating one of his favorite desserts at one of our family gatherings. I always knew that Grandpa would be um, willing and, and happy to listen and just to um, offer wisdom without any kind of judgment. You know, I miss being able to call him up after some awesome adventure that I've had and telling him all about it. I remember the first trip I went on after he passed. And I took a walk on one of the breaks. I went to a conference and I was taking a walk in between break and I would have called him then and told him all about the trip so far in the conference and he would have loved it and that's when it hit me I had a pain in my heart in my chest when I thought of the fact and faced the fact that I couldn't call him up I couldn't tell him all about it anymore but at that time I decided that my everlasting father, my daddy that never dies, would like to hear about my adventures. And I started to talk to him. And, and even though my daddy is peacefully resting now, someday he's going to raise up joyfully, enthusiastically out of that grave. And he's going to sing that song. It is morning in my heart. It is morning in my heart. That's the morning I'm looking forward to. That is the morning. Hi. This is Grandpa with a new script prepare for you. But first, I do want to remind you how precious you are. Our title is God's Peace. God's Peace. The first passage is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord favor you and grant you his perfect peace that passes understanding. The next text in Isaiah 26, verse 3, You will keep him in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on you. And the last one, Psalm 4, verse 6, I will both lie down and in peace and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. The following short story will illustrate our message. Our daughter and her husband took me to a nearby recreation area a couple of days ago. The purpose was to do earthing, that is walking barefooted in the grass and on down to the creek in the shallow water. This is an effective therapy for arrhythmia and it increases the blood circulation. A young lady approached us wondering why we were doing this. Realizing that this was our therapy, she asked what other lifestyle practices we did. She explained that often she doesn't sleep well. She lays awake worrying a lot. What can I do about my anxiety, she asked. We told her about our God, who wants to bless us with peaceful sleep. She asked, well, how will that work for my problem? We shared a short testimony of our faith journey, 
which led us to trust in the God of peace. Upon her request, we spoke the ironic prayer over her as, as stated above. She parted with a big smile saying, thank you so very much. This is just what I needed. You made my day. O oh, gracious Father, bless this young daughter of yours with a childlike faith. Increase our faith so that we will be messengers of your love, joy, and peace wherever we are and wherever we go. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Peace, peace, my heart is full of peace. Peace, peace, my heart is full of peace. Because my Savior's watching over me, that's the reason why my heart is full of peace.